This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. I want to mention part of this new crew that you're going to be working with. Uh, the observer would mention Rachel Ellering, Casey Quinn, Garza Jr., Laredo Kid, Chris Adonis, who's the former Chris Masters, a new suicide, which is going to be Caleb Conley, uh, Kevin Matthews, the tag team of Reno Scum, just on and on, uh, including they've they've reached out to Conan saying, "Hey, we want you to do the LAX group." Apparently, uh, Loki wasn't interested, so they say, "Hey, just find a new tag team." They find EYFBO from New York, which is Angel Ortiz and Mike Drastic. And you take a look three years later, Rachel Ellering had a shot at NXT and was uh, eventually released. Casey Quinn is now with NXT as Ava Story. Garza Jr. is now Angel Garza on Raw. Laredo Kid has recently worked some AEW shows. I think Caleb Conley was a part of the whole ftr thing and worked a dark match for aw but i don't think he's doing anything else with them and chris masters is a free agent kevin matthews is a free agent after i guess he was arguing with scott demore on twitter reno scum recently returned to impact and eyfbo are now you know a part of the tag team santana and ortiz part of the inner circle in aw it's remarkable when you look back three years ago and see the amount of talent young talent that was here at impact that now has moved on and made a splash somewhere else. The observer would say Pritchard will be a featured player on television. And it is a cross promotion for his podcast in the sense he'll push TNA and they'll push his podcast. The idea is his podcast has so many listeners that it will draw more, more viewers to the product, which is just tremendous. Uh, Vince Russo claimed that Jeff Jarrett emailed him and asked him what his podcast numbers were. He said after doing so, he hasn't heard back from Jarrett. I guess Bruce Pritchard, whose numbers are far better, got the gig for that reason. It's pretty remarkable to think that there was at least an idea. What if it was Russo and uh, ultimately you got the nod? So carry me through like your first day, man. You're, you're there and you told us about bumping into Conan, but anything else? I mean, what's sort of the day in your, your first day back in the wrestling business like? You know, it was kind of getting acquainted with old friends, and it had been several years since I had been there. It just was um, a time to kind of say hello and, and get back with everybody. Dutch Mantel was there. Got to see Dutch and, and talk with Dutch, which is always an awful lot of fun, just to hear his views on the world and the wrestling business in general. So got to bullshit a little while with Dutch and uh, Jeremy Borash, who was was still there. And Jeremy seemed to have a lot more responsibility and doing a lot more at uh, this time. So it was just an opportunity to sit and, and talk and see what the hell's been going on for all this time that I've been gone. And by that point, it was three years since I'd seen them. Yeah, I think that's about right. And so just kind of catching up and, and trying to figure out what are we going to do? And as I sit here and think about it, I, I know that uh, they had other people involved or that they wanted involved in that first show that didn't make it for whatever reason. Um but I do remember Jeff asking me, you know, hey, who out there do you think that we should go after? That was just early on. I, I said, uh, Del Rio, Alberto Del Rio. I said, I, I look at this guy and he's got the look and I said, I don't know him. Who was it but, that was supposed uh, to come in that didn't at first? Was it Matt Hardy or was it Bo Bully Ray? or Bully Ray. Okay. Yeah. Bully Ray, I guess, was the person that they were looking for to to come in and be that, be the guy that they eventually brought Del Rio in for. And allegedly he didn't like the creative or, or something of that nature. Right. Bully Ray. Right. Allegedly. I never spoke to him about it. So I, I really don't have any idea, but I think it had gone down to the wire and had gone back and forth, you know, yes, no, yes, no. But, um, I wasn't involved in that. Thank God. And at the last minute, 
he, he decided not to come. So they were dealing literally the night before in trying to get Del Rio in there, and they did. And so that was a big, you know, big, big surprise that somebody took a picture of him in the ring during the day. We were going live that night. They took a picture of Del Rio in the ring as the big surprise and oh posted it all over the place. <sighs> Some old names are coming back. Of course, ODB is here. Uh, James Storm is going to come back doing the old cowboy James Storm gimmick with his old music. That's of note because he had made, uh, well, he spent a cup of coffee in NXT. This uh, first set of tapings, I think they also tape a knockouts pay per view. What did you think of the knockouts pay per view? Well, thank God I, I wasn't a part of it. Um, so I got to leave. <laughs> but. No, there, there were, they had some good talent there. And yeah. anytime that, that you got Gail Kim, that they brought back at one point and brought Gail in to actually help coordinate the women's division there the knockout division, I thought that was a good plus. I thought that was a really big plus because Gail is a hell of a performer and she's one of those rare performers that not only performs well, but she can tell you how to do it. She can tell you what to do and what not to do. So I thought that was a smart move. And yeah, I'm not kidding when I say I, I really didn't see it. I didn't stick around for it because it was, I was, I was that stereotypical old timer. I, you, oh my God, I was Ric Flair. Oh my yeah, God. I wasn't Ric Flair, but I did just come in, do my shit, and got the hell out and didn't care about what anybody else was doing. Karen Jarrett's out on TV and she's calling herself the Queen of the Mountain. She announces that she's the co founder of GFW and that GFW and Impact Wrestling have merged. The fans politely applauded, kind of like they thought they should have. Karen is usually very good on interviews, but she was very shaky here. That's according to the wrestling observer. What do you think about Karen Jarrett being a central figure on TV and calling herself queen of the mountain? We haven't seen her on TV in a long time now, but they were trying something here. What'd you think? They were. And I always thought that Karen was extremely entertaining on television and Karen had a, um, a way about her. Karen could get heat. Yep. Karen could get heat backstage. Karen could get heat in front of the cameras by God. And she was one of those talent that was always coming to you and, and saying, what can I do better? What, how can I, how can I make this better? And I thought that she was probably one of the best heels and most underutilized heels that they had there. Just because she she was natural, she Karen was just a natural in that regard. She was a natural on air talent, and I think what would get her flustered was when you would try to get her to recite and remember a bunch of things that she didn't really feel. But from a talent standpoint, um, thought she was tremendous. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.